happened that one nice evening I was spending in a pub in an old town. I was watching quite boring football game. And one talk that was taken next uh, table of mine uh, caught my attention. There were several bearded guys with funny caps discussing technology. Uh, why Apple is much cooler than REST technology. Uh, and then they switched to information security, data privacy, and this finally got my attention, because, well, I'm 10 plus years in, in this area. Uh, they were discussing threats. They were discussing uh, some organizations that are collecting uh, our data, such as uh, NSA. Uh, they were discussing what are Russian hackers sponsored by Russian government uh, trying to hack into. Uh, they were discussing a bunch of different threats, China, Romanian credit card schemers. Uh, they were even discussing Nigerian scammers that uh, for the for, for last 25 years probably they are flooding all the world with uh, messages, wow, congratulations, you won a lottery, congratulations. Uh, we chose chosen you to help our king to clear out or cash out money that he stole from their own people. Uh, actually, the, uh, in the last 20 years, the only improvement they made, they switched from faxing this to emails. Uh, Something sounds ridiculously uh, foolish, uh, but actually there is some uh, impact on every on us, on, on every of us. Uh, we are kind of worried. Uh, we are hearing a lot of noise in the media. Uh, this company was hacked. Something was leaked. Uh, there is a bunch of difficult technical stuff behind this, how it happens. But for media, it is enough to have a headline. Uh, then switching a little bit back to humans uh, and to remember Pyramid of Maslow. That is one of the base layers, security, how secure we feel. I'm not talking about technology, but how secure we feel. How secure we feel without, uh, with ourselves, how secure we feel with our assets. So fear, worries, brings to paranoia, and that's a bad thing. Technology should help people. Technology should be funny and helpful. So first thing. Do we fear, do we worry about things that we control? The answer is no. Research shows that usually, again, this is not yet technology, usually humans are worried about 96% of things that they are not in control. You are worrying, you are in worries that it rains today. You are in worries that somewhere earthquake is, has happened, upcoming hurricane, but you cannot do anything. So, logics, science, and analysis. These are three things that can help you to retain your safety feeling. Two things to measure, two things to understand. Likelihood of the happening. What are the chances of, of the incident? What are the chances of the event? Impact. What will be impact of the incident? What will be impact of the accident? Let's take, for example, skydiving. Sounds cool. Sounds a little bit dangerous. 
But statistics says that that's not a common thing to parachute failure. Uh, however, impact is quite huge. So combination of those impact plus likelihood lets us to define a risk. And based on that, we can take the decision. Are we going into or are we trying to avoid this? Okay, let's switch to technology. That was how humans feel. Now, we have one billion active websites. And counting on. That means potentially in this audience we have 10 to 20 website owners that they launch website to be accessed by the users. At the moment we have 3 billion active internet users across the globe. They are using various applications, they are using various services, uh, they are looking for information, exchanging information, photos, social networking. Uh, sometimes even they are doing the job that they are paid for. So huge, huge amount of interactions. And then next digit, 20 billion devices on the internet at the moment. It's upcoming wave Internet of Things, when every item that has any chance to be digitalized will be. It means it will be connected to the Internet. It will have his own IP address, and it will send and receive information. It will be another connection to the existing gazillions of existing ones. So, bearing in mind this, uh, it is possible that soon you will be reading tweets by your fridge or you will be friends in Facebook with your car. This Internet of Things will double by 2020. So, information that is stored, processed, transmitted is an asset. Or in other words, it has some value. You can express value in different things. It is valuable only for me. For example, my childhood photos. They are not value for anyone else. Though they are on the internet in some cloud service, they are stored. And this asset, I grant someone to look after my asset. Your bank account. This asset is easily, easily measured. There is an amount of money laying in the bank. So threats to the assets are the main thing. Am I a target is the main question for you. Should I be worried? Am I a target? I, I, I hear there is a bunch of Chinese cyber criminals and, 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 and Russians and actually all across the globe. There is no country that didn't had involvement in cyber crime attacks. Yes, you are a target, but only in two cases. Case one, you have valuable asset, and my childhood photos is not an item. Or you are granted with access to some valuable asset. That was case one. Case two, you are totally careless about security. You just love ticking and clicking technology stuff and you do not fear 
that someone can steal your information, that someone can am amend your uh, email sent to anyone else. So services that you are using, you think that they are three. Yeah, they are. Not. You are paying for the free services with new generation currency. It is privacy. Lots and lots of information is gathered about you as a consumer, and huge amount of money is paid for this information. This is why we have those fancy free services. So if I grant someone with my assets, I do expect they will take care for those instead of me. And this is actually true, <clears throat> because those corporations are protecting, first of all, their information, second of all, your information for you. Either you pay for the service with money, either you pay for the service with your privacy. But this is asset, this information is asset. So they are investing huge amounts of money into protecting this. And they are day by day in a race with the cyber criminals. Believe me, uh, especially Microsoft are good at it as they are issuing uh, organ, urgent security updates every Tuesday. They get hacked by Friday. They are working during weekend on, on Tuesday. They are issuing another set of critical security patches. This is the race that's happening. What to do for you as a generic user? You do not want and you don't need to get uh, in deep studies of secure coding, uh, develop your own cryptography algorithms. That is quite, quite difficult, actually. Simply use free tools and free techniques that are available as a service, that are available as a product. Sometimes free, sometimes you have to pay for them, but you have to evaluate the risk. Is it worth? Analysis, measure, risk. Impact, likelihood, risk. Too complex and difficult? There is a simple way to, to compare it to the real life. First of all, when I mention security, first thing comes in my mind, uh, that's password. Yep, you are protecting your information with a password. How you are managing your keys? I believe you are trying to keep them in a safe place. You are not giving them to strangers. If you lost the key, you are changing the lock. Same thing about passwords. Imagine a city, a city with one million houses, with one million doors, and one million locks. Would you keep your personal assets, personal valuable assets, With a, in a house with a doors that can be opened with a screwdriver? I believe not. Or even not locked. That means no password to gain, to get uh, access to some system. So this extremely low profile or extremely simple lock is passwords as A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, five, uh, passwords like I love my Yorkshire Terrier, but well, that's uh, difficult to break one. Uh, and imagine 
a hacker with a superpower to check if all the doors are locked in five seconds all across the city. This is scripting. Simple script can check if the doors are locked in a million houses in five seconds. And if you are careless, then you are a victim. You even don't have valuable asset. Still, you are a victim. Digital signature. What do you want to do? You can provide evidence that you signed a document digitally. You can define your identity that you were the one that you signed this digital document. Confirmation, authentication, these are services that digital signature can grant. Cryptography sounds quite, quite, quite difficult, but remember the school? I don't know, what about you? I was doing this, exchanging one characters with another, so only uh, me and my friend can understand the notes and we were exchanging those, that was fun. Same thing, cryptography, only keys are up to four, 8,000 bits long. Uh, algorithms are developed by the best mathematicians, a lot of calculation. Confidentiality and integrity. If you want to deliver the message to someone and to make sure that content of the message was not changed on the transmission. It is the same as an envelope with a letter with a lead stamp. Everything, every, every item has uh, analog in physical world. So, should we be paranoid? You not. I am in security technology. I should. Thank you.